Hello. Today I'm going to show you how to use Data Studio to give students feedback on their assessments uh, in a way that allows you to provide one link to all your students and they'll each see their own individual data. So I gave a test on Into the Wild. It had four questions. Uh, one about the events of the book, one about the way the book was organized, and one about the main claim. And we asked one more question about what lessons students took personally from the book. So four basic questions there, but they're all essay questions and they all require uh, students to write a fairly lengthy response. So those responses ended up in this spreadsheet. Now I've already done some editing on this spreadsheet. And of course, uh, we've already assessed it. We've already graded it. So we've given students some feedback as to whether their score excels or is basic or proficient. Um, we're using standards-based grading this year. So um, that matters there. We still have a total score for them because they do love their numbers. Um, and you can see their responses. I've also added these columns, number one score, number two score, number three score, so that there's a different score for each student, um, a different name for each column, I should say. So one score, two score, three score, instead of just score. That's gonna matter in a moment. Um, and I've changed all the student names to white in this column so that they're not visible to you, um, but they would show up in our Data Studio report um, that they'll be visible to the kids. All right, so we need a new Data Studio report. I'm gonna click blank report. And I think it knows that I like this theme with the grid behind it. Right away it asked me how I want to get my data and I want to get my data from Google Sheets. So I'm gonna click Google Sheets. And right up there at the top is my Into the Wild unit test because it's the sheet I edited most recently. We'll use the first row as headers. We'll include hidden and filtered cells. And the column headers must be unique, which is why it says one score, two score, three score for the score for each question. So we'll go ahead and add that spreadsheet. Now Data Studio right away is going to try and generate a table that I do not want it to generate. Um, so come on. Having a little trouble adding my spreadsheet. All right, spreadsheet is added. Like I said, it generates this table that I don't really want. So we'll take that one out right away. Um, next, we want to do something with our spreadsheet. We do want to add a chart so that we can have student responses and their score. And it's filling that in with email addresses. We don't want their email address on there. Uh, instead, what we want is going to be their answer to that first question. So um, the first question was uh, one. And I'm going to go to style and take out my row numbers because they drive me a little nuts. Don't need those. Uh, going back to data, we don't need the record count. We don't need to know how many students wrote that answer. That's a little unhelpful. Um, we need... Um, just the events, and I want also the score for number one. So the first student who wrote this, wrote those two, these are actually showing you the results from two students. There's something I want to do with my data though, because I really only wanted to show me the results of one student. Um, and I'm going to use this little pencil icon there to edit my data, and I'm going to choose filter by email. Filtering the data by email, assuming that my spreadsheet collected student email addresses when I uh, had students fill out the form. So I'm going to select the email field, which is obviously email address. And when I say done on that, I have to allow it to use my email address to recognize my data. I added myself as an imaginary student. So my student data looks like this. All right. Uh, now, a few things style-wise, I want it to wrap the text. So that's pretty important so you can see the full answer that the student wrote. And I also want it to wrap the text in the table body so that we can see that answer. So we can see the full question, we can see the whole answer, we can see the score, and we can tell that it excels. Now, all of this is way too small. Uh, for students to really read easily. So we're going to adjust the table body size from 12 point to maybe 14. And I think I just need to extend this down a little bit. We also can show up, take off the pagination. There aren't gonna be multiple pages of this to look at. 
All right, so here is the first question I asked my students, the answer that I, the imaginary student, wrote, and the uh, score that that student earned. Let's make our table, our data studio report a little prettier. We'll add a label up here at the top. I just click this text box here and we'll call it into the wild test. And of course, that's going to be way too small. So we're going to change that. Um, you can't really, it's hard to go too big on these things. So I'm going to go with 44. I don't love Roboto. So which one do I like? Actually, Chewy's been working with me on those things. Let's see. Yeah, something like that. Um, so I also want to have a field that confirms that I'm looking at the correct student. So I'm going to add a field for the student name. To do that, I'm going to add another chart because I'm going to pull that name data from my spreadsheet. So again, it's going to just sort of generate some things that I don't need it to generate. It doesn't need to show my email address. It needs to show my name. And in this case, the name I gave myself was imaginary student. Again, I'm going to take off the row numbers. Don't need those. And I'm going to take off the pagination. I don't need that. And I also don't even need the header because all I want it to do, I don't even need the timestamp, and I don't need the record count. So taking those off, all I want it to do is show me the name of the student that I'm looking at. And again, I'll go to style, change the table body size to 18, sometimes even 28, to confirm that I'm looking at this imaginary student. So hello, imaginary student. I made myself the imaginary student. Let's repeat some of that and add a table that'll show us the results of question two. So again, we're gonna add a chart. It'll be a table. And again, it's guessing and it's guessing wrong. So I'm gonna do something different here. Instead of having to clean up this whole chart, um, I'm gonna delete it. And I'm gonna choose instead to duplicate this one. So right click on that one and choose duplicate. Now I have the same chart twice, but it's already formatted the way I want. And now I can go in and change some things about it. So instead of repeating question one, I'm gonna chain, take that off and I'm gonna make it question two. And instead of, you can change the order of things. You just take this one and drag it up and it'll put that there. And instead of the score for number one, I, of course, now want the score for number two. So here's my number two score. And then I'll just drag this line over so that that matches up with number one. All right, so here's what my student wrote for number one. Here's what my imaginary student wrote for number two. And again, I'm gonna duplicate this for question three. Drag it down, change the two, go ahead and add three question. And, oops, I added it in metric instead of in dimension. Change this to the three question, drag it up, remove the two question, remove the two score, add the three score, and drag it over. Now, some of my students are gonna write longer answers. Um, so since I know some students wrote longer answers for question two, I'm actually going to leave quite a gap, I think, between these things. I also just have room for that on my report. So with just four questions, I have room to give plenty of room to each question response and score. Now question four is a little different because we gave some written feedback on question four. So um, I'm going to still, again, duplicate my question. I used control D that time instead of using a right click. And now again, I'm gonna take off the threes and add four and add the score for four. Or actually the score for four wasn't called score, it was called response. And in this case, um, I could leave this in the middle because sometimes I wrote a slightly longer response to the student. So I'm just gonna drag it about halfway. So again, question three might have some longer answers. So I'm gonna drag that down a little bit. All right. And this is essentially your report to what students will see. Uh, I clicked on view, looks like this. 
So they would see their, na their name here instead of imaginary student on my spreadsheet. You see, I've made myself the imaginary student filtering by my email. But their report will be filtered by their email. So they will see their name, their data, their scores, um, and their um, responses down here and the feedback from their teacher. Now, I don't always just score at Excel as proficient basic. Often I write detailed descriptive feedback to students about their scores and what they need to do to make it better. Um, so that fills in here too. I've done that in some other reports um, as well. And then um, I'm gonna add one more thing to mine just because my students are gonna ask. So I'm gonna take imaginary student and move it over. And I'm gonna add one more little chart for their total score. Again, email address is not what I want. What I want is their total score. And again, I don't need the row numbers. I don't need the pagination. Take those off in style. I don't need a record count. I just want their total score. So, uh, and it doesn't need to be this big, so I'm gonna squeeze that down a little bit. And back to style, I'm gonna make the table label much larger. That's the table. And the table header much larger. And I'm also gonna take this one here and move it to the center. There we go. All right, so they can see their total score. They can see their name. They can see the name of the test. They can see their three responses. Uh, if you want to get into it with style, you can start to make things prettier. Um, you can start to change colors on headers. Uh, you can change colors on your tables. Um, that's too dark. You can use this, All right? So you can start to play around with what it looks like and what it feels like. Um, the only other things I added besides, all I did was add a chart and the only chart I added was this table chart. Uh, the only thing, other thing I added was some text boxes for the name of the test. Um, to have students see this, you click on view and you give them this link. And I really like that I can provide one link to all my students and they can all see their feedback from that single link. I can link that repeatedly. Um, wherever I need it, whenever I need them to go look at that feedback again. Um, and then it's better than AutoCrowd or something like that where I'd have to go get them to look and share it with me. So uh, that is how I do this. I'm sorry if it seems a little complicated for you, but uh, that's kind of how it works. Hope that helps you.